What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here with another scouting report for you guys. It has been linked in the press, Vanderson to Spurs. Um, it has been, you know, heavily linked for Fabrizio Romano and other journalists that Spurs are looking at Vanderson. However, Fabrizio does say it's a hard deal to do. He does seem to say that about every single Spurs deal uh, that he does report on. But let's hope we can get him over the line because I think he's a top, top quality player in terms of someone that can you know, provide real competition for Pedro Porro as opposed to maybe having Emerson there or Jed Spence there where you know that Pedro Porro is going to start week in, week out. A player like Vanderson is can definitely provide a real, real quality uh, competition. And we're going to delve deep into the stats, seeing what he has done on the pitch for Monaco over the past year and see why Spurs are looking at him. Yeah, it was reportedly uh, he's going to cost upwards of around 40 million euros or over 40 million euros. So he's not going to come cheap if the Spurs do sign him. But at 22 years of age, his last couple of seasons have been really strong at Monaco. And um, looking at his pie chart, this is how he kind of profiles as an inverted uh, fullback. And fairly strong, I would say. Does get on the ball a lot, which is really, really positive. And I think that's really important in our... In our um, role as an inverted fullback is going to have to be very comfortable on the ball picking up in tight spaces as you can see here does pick up the ball a lot and as well in the middle third he picks up the ball uh, quite consistently receives the ball in good situations also you can see their tackles inceptions really really high in the 99th percentile so that's really good uh carrying the ball um he's also pretty strong in the um 67th and 61st percentile for carries into the final third and progressive carries where he doesn't perform so well um his passing seems to be a bit of a loose passer and doesn't commit too many passes into the final third his pass completion is quite low and as well uh for, from a defensive point of view does make a lot of tackles inceptions which mean which indicates he's quite aggressive but when it comes to percentage of his dribblers tackled very low percentage percentage of aerials won very low as well so definitely stuff to work on defensively I have noticed that Monaco play a back three system quite often, so he does find himself playing wing back as opposed to full back, which is obviously something that Porra was doing before he joined Tottenham as well. So um, that doesn't surprise me too much. Uh, um, that just because he's playing in a back three and a wing back doesn't mean he can't play in the full back system. So I think we're looking at um, his profile rather than his position. And you look at um, his heat map, which is quite interesting. Um, this is season heat map. So. He does stay wide, but as you can see here, he inverts quite a lot. A lot of red in that quite central area on the right-hand side. Um, so definitely isn't just stuck to the touchline. Although very much concentrated out wide as well, he very much likes to come inside and uh, pick up the ball inside, which is something he's going to have to do at Tottenham. Uh, with obviously he's got you know high stats in the ball carrying. Is that is that what the the blue line is? The blue line is tackles inceptions. Where's the ball carrying? Which one is that? This one, tight turquoise. Do you think that he Pretty could? Good. Do you think that he could maybe play at right wing in our system? Someone that can touch, tug the touch line, get maybe uh, good crosses into the box. I mean, maybe if need be. Um, I don't think we're signing. I don't think we're signing him to play on the wing. I think if we're going to sign a winger, then we should sign someone else in personally. But if no, I'm not saying we're signing him as a winger. But do you think he can do that role? Maybe if he can fill in there you know, on on the odd occasion, maybe in, in you know maybe a game for example Man City away and we're winning one 0 and we just want to shut up top a bit, you bring him on, put him right wing, and you always have two wing uh, uh, fullbacks there, and also you still provide that threat going forward if need be. So I think it's a role that maybe he can do. Same with Porro, I think he can probably fill in there, but it's not something I'd look for him to play consistently. Mm. Um, I do think like. Maybe he has different strengths to Pedro Porro, but they do profile maybe a bit similar, don't they? Um, well, I will get into the comparison in a minute, but I would say they have different strengths. I would say um, Porro is more more of like a passer and um, Vanderson's more of a ball carrier. He uses his ability to, to dribble a bit more than, than Pedro Porro does. So I think it's different. As you can see here, if we look at the par, look at his passing stats, um, uh, this is Vanderson from Monaco. Not the not the strongest. Um, does have a decent long range pass. I can see here. Um, pass doesn't commit a lot of passes. Complete a lot of passes. Doesn't attempt that many. 60th percentile. It's so not bad, but it's pass completion 74%. So that's quite low, even for a wing back. That's um, significantly low. 
Um, albeit, I'm not sure how Monaco play in terms of like, are they possession based or not. But um, d- um, his passing stats are not the strongest. Passes into the penalty area is decent. Um, it does get assists, um, not the best. Expected assists and key passes are m- much better than his actual assist total. So maybe it suggests he gets let down by his teammates quite a bit when he actually does create more chances than they put away. Um, doesn't do a lot of crosses. As you can see, despite playing wing back, he's in the 10th percentile for crosses into the box. So mm. doesn't actually cross the ball too much. Um, progressive passes, um, 60th percentile, so not terrible. But not the strongest, obviously, comparing to Porro. Porro's, um, I don't have it here, but Porro's passing stats are a lot stronger if, than, than Vanderson. If we were to sign him, do you see maybe something coming up where, depending on the opposition and what we need from our right back, you know, you can actually alternate them in that way? I think he would definitely come in as competition. I don't think he would come in um, as pure backup. I think this is a player who comes in to push Porro. And and I think for sure there'll be rotation, especially all the games we've got coming up. Because you saw, you saw last season, didn't you, that Pedro Porro just played literally every single game, week in, week out. Well, he, he didn't did trust s- Emerson, did he? Exactly. And he did seem to tire uh, at one point in the season. You saw the performance level drop from Pedro Porro. So having someone like him to come in, that should alleviate that. 100%. And that's the, I think that that would be the idea um, of bringing him in is to real provide real competition and, and a genuine alternative to Poro, so we're not overworking him. And I don't, I don't even think it's about rotation, game to game. I think within game as well, you can take off Poro during the game, bring on Vanderson, and have those fresh legs without a drop off in quality. And uh, it could go back some way to go back to you know to the what Potts used to do with Trippier and Carl Walker maybe not to that extreme because literally he was like one game in one game out with with Trippier and Carl Walker in that season but we could see something similar there again with all the games we have um, coming up especially in the first half of the season when Europa League group stages extending to January um, and December having you know six games in that month with plus two Europa League games we're going to need a big squad we're go- I don't think any player in this squad is going to be able to play every game doesn't matter who they are you yeah. know it doesn't matter if it's Son it uh, doesn't matter who, who it is. Um, every player is going to have to be rotated, except yeah. for maybe uh, potentially the, the centre backs and, and the keeper. I think yeah. those two, those three, maybe can can play the majority of games. But I think apart from that, every player is going to need to be able to come come in and out of the team to keep yeah. fitness. I would even argue the centre backs as well. When you've got someone like Radu Dragusin on the bench, you know he's going to have to have his um, his consistent game time this season as well. But anyway, let's go on to the. Comparison you want to go to next? Uh, no, look at the possession. So this is how we... Uh, this is possession stats. So as you can see, a lot stronger. Much better like ball carrying. Does get the ball a lot. What's interesting, um, touches in the middle third and attacking third and penalty are really, really high for a fullback. So that suggests he gets into a lot of good uh, attacking positions and gets into the final third a lot. Again, him playing wing back, he would help with that. Um, but I do think as well... Um, in our system, he's going to have to do that a lot. You see how how um, uh, the positions Poro takes up. Take-ons, quite decent. Um, um, take-on percentage is not great, but he clearly dribbles a lot. So, yeah, he maybe loses it a lot, but he does get um, get the joy of dribbling past players quite a bit. Carries really strong. Does carry the ball into the final third a lot. Progressive passes received is really good as well. One thing he's clearly struggling at is uh, miscontrols, dispossessed. He does lose the ball a lot. So he's not great at keeping possession. So to be fair, I do think Porro was similar before he came to Tottenham. So it's something he'll have to work on, but I do think he can do at Tottenham. So when it comes to uh, the differences between Porro and Vanderson, I think Porro um, definitely performs better at his passing than the possession, whereas Vanderson's a bit the other way around. So definitely um, something, um, definitely different strengths, but not um, maybe he's more similar to like a doggy who performs a lot better with his possession than uh, he does with the passing yeah obviously you got to caveat it a bit I think you did mention it earlier about you know the different systems the teams play that Tottenham play that Monaco play and different stats are going to be highlighted in those particular systems but you know Pedro Porro a lot of the strengths that we saw from him in his stats before joining Tottenham are maybe not what he's showing here at Tottenham in terms of I think he's been a lot better defensively um, since he's grown into the team. He wasn't occupying those central areas like he is now at at, um, at Tottenham. So, you know, you, you do have to caveat these stats a little bit in terms of the systems that the teams play. Of course, all, all stats have, have to be caveated, but this is just the base stats. We can just try and learn things from them. But no stat tells a full story. Of course, you have to drill context into all of them. Defensively, though, for Vanderson, 
Um, he, in terms of the stats wise, performs really well, um, which is really encouraging. Lots of tackles, interceptions, so definitely very, very aggressive. What's really good here is as well, tackles in the middle and attacking third in the 99th percentile for both of them. So he's very aggressive, high up the pitch, likes to press really well. So that's really, really good. Um, dribblers tackled. What's interesting is dribblers tackled is one of the best, but percentage of dribblers tackled is low. So he tackles a lot of, um, he gets involved in a lot of these duels, it seems though, and comes out on top on a number of occasions, but actually percentage wise, quite low. So um, I guess we can learn from that. He gets a lot involved in a lot of duels, uh, which is which is quite encouraging. Um, blocks does puts his bond in the line, really good with inter interceptions as well, which is really good. So I think these defensive stats for Para, I remember when we were looking at them, were, were not as good. Yeah. And uh, Vanderson um, definitely performs quite well with them. Yeah, and I now think now Poro performs very well. These defenses, and I think we've seen a lot of times that you know teams are able to spring on us in terms of counter attacks, and maybe you know having him in the team at a right back in maybe an inverted right back role, it might uh, stop that a little bit. Yeah, definitely. And how he compares to Poro, um, quite interesting. So this is the comparison: um, Poro is in the blue, Vanderson is in the red, uh, and it's pretty much as we as we thought. Um, tackles and interceptions, actually. Um, Vanderson outdoes him and he also outdoes him in the carrying department so in possession um, and on the ball uh, ability to carry the ball Vanderson is better but I think all the passing metrics Poro outperforms him um, loses the ball less as well um, and he gets on the ball a bit more but actually Vanderson gets on the ball a bit more higher up the pitch so Poro is taking the ball a bit more in the defensive um, third rather than the middle third uh, but Poro still outperforms him um, on the passing um, passing stats, so I think they just got different strengths, as you as you see there. Um, in terms of ball carrying, Vanderson performs really strong defensively as well, gets involved in a lot more duels. But in terms of being on the ball, um, uh, ball carrying ability, uh, sorry, passing ability, um, Poro's still leading the way there. Yeah, so I think uh, what we can take away from it is that two of them obviously very um, good right backs, top players. And if we do have them, like we said before, provide serious competition, they could provide different options for us in different sorts of games, whether we're playing a low block, a high intensity team, a team sitting in a mid block. You maybe want to uh, pick um, either Porro or Vanderson to really combat the team that we're playing against. And I think um, it will do us the world of good if we can bring in uh, someone of Vanderson's ilk. And it's not just at the right back. We need this kind of competition throughout the whole team um, in every position and I think we've got that at right centre back we're now we're Radu Dragus and if we bring in Vanderson we'll have that at right back but we need to have that in all uh, different areas of the pitch and let's hope we can get there but that is your uh, takeaway. That is your uh, scout report of Vanderson. Let me know in the comment section below. Would you like to see Vanderson at Spurs? Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on you Spurs. Spurs.